Okay. So today, as uh, Rashid already introduced me and he requested me on inbox, are, are you all hearing me now? Yes, sir. Okay, now I'm going to start my presentation. Uh, uh, already introduced by Rashi, there are some few things about my Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can connect and see a lot of academic stuff there as well. But today we are mainly focusing on managing hypertension. And I have kept it very simple, just an approach towards hypertension because most of the time we considered high blood pressure or hypertension as a disease of numbers. And what we do, we just see a patient with high blood pressures and our objective is there just to bring the blood pressure down to a level which is acceptable. And we don't focus on other things. So we have to take high blood pressure as a comprehensive illness, as a risk factor, a major risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So whenever you see a patient with high blood pressure, assume or consider him to be a precursor towards a lot of problem because although it's just a risk factor but it can cause a lot of major organ system involvement and can lead to a lot of complications so if you just look at this continuum in this slide you can see most of the time people at primary care physician level just think that this is we are dealing a risk factor but here I am just giving you a clue to words. It's my macro and microvascular complications. If you see as a macro complication, it can affect heart by means of LVH and by means of involving coronary arteries. And similarly, it's affecting kidneys by means of affecting microvasculature. And just considering these two things, you can assume that this high blood pressure starts as a risk factor, but can lead to in terms of heart, heart failure, MIs, and ultimately end stage heart disease. Similarly, affecting kidneys, it can lead to endothelial dysfunction, microalbuminuria, and ultimately end stage renal disease. And in both, just like these two things, this blood pressure is affecting macrovasculature of every body, every organ, whether it's brain, whether it's kidneys, whether it's peripheral vasculature, similarly, a microvasculature involvement, eyes, kid. So everywhere, this blood pressure is affecting. So whenever you see a patient with high blood pressure, don't assume that he is that he's just at this stage of the disease. He may have affected any of the major organ system. So take it as a continuum of various diseases. And a number of times we diagnose high blood pressure patient, maybe five years, 10 years later after development of high blood pressure or hypertension. So you don't know at what stage you're dealing with. Second thing about hypertension is it's very complex pathophysiology. You see, there are a lot of things involved in, in forming a blood pressure, which is cardiac output, peripheral resistance, heart rate, and all these variables are affected by a lot of influences. You see here, salt, obesity, alcohol, stress, genetic, pathogenic mechanisms, autoregulation, ion transport, sympathetic activity, renal. So, there are various things which are there to maintain a blood pressure and causing its variabilities. So sometimes you may have a transient reactionary response, which may be a normal response and leading to increased blood pressure, which may not be labeled as hypertension. So always consider that every person who's having high blood pressure may not be hypertensive because of this very complex pathophysiology because the influences on blood pressure are variable. They are transient, they are permanent, they are uh, like extrinsic, intrinsic. So you have to consider the situation in which you're taking blood pressure. And that's the way you see that these influences lead to in variability in blood pressure in same individual in different timings. 
you can have different level of blood pressure at different ranges in different uh, times. So it's, it's a very difficult to diagnose high blood pressure. It's not that easy that you just take one or two reading and can label someone that he's hypertensive because of these three basic things. So with that background, firstly, that always considered a continuum of hypertension. Don't ever take your patient as lightly that this is a patient of just high blood pressure. He may be at any stage of the disease in terms of complications of different organs. That's very important to understand. Second, complex pathophysiology. And third, variability. Let's come with that background to a scenario which we very commonly face in our practical life. And no matter with which specialty you are, you may see such kind of patient. Even at home, some of your relatives come with this problem that a 50 years male with no significant past history presented with mild headache and found to have blood pressure of 150-90. A very common scenario. What to do in such situation? And I commonly see whenever I do CMEs and pose this question in front of different kind of audience as a primary care physician or other. Here, if Rashid, you can take one or two answer, I'm happy to pause here for a while to get some answers from the audience. If anyone want to add on something with that kind of scenario, what will they do? Okay, sir, I will ask them. Uh, and, and, uh... قفكي قعنت على تسؤاش أنا قفكي كنت جوابي كرا وفي عنت على سؤاش هدي ميان أفصومالية بس إنجليش كي ينقطر جماع سؤال دان أفصومالية سؤاش هو هواي وحاجرة كونتنجر نن وحاجرة كونتنج وحاجرة كونتنجر نن أح وحونا وحان وحون اللي هي وحم هي ما أه هيستوري أه هرى أه حضر هرى أه صوم بري مجرو Okay, okay. I'll I'll try the English. Okay. 50 years male with no significant past history presented with a mild headache and found to have blood pressure of 150 over 90. What to do? So I shall skip kick to have a character. Okay, we'll see in a year, Dr. Elias. Dr. Elias. Can you do Elias? Can you answer this question with sir? وهي لتا هاي بكان كان إن إنترفيشن كان مصمينا هاي لتا إن إن فلو كرينو إن فلو أبو صمينو إن وقتي يكل دوان إن إن عبر رودي كيسا ونصعنو. Can you say that Dr. Elias if you can please? Yeah, if you can ask if you can answer in English, I'll also get directly from you rather than Rashid translating it to me. The the intervention I will do it the first step is to measure in different uh, consequence in times, uh, we, we follow up the vision and we measure okay. it in different times. So, for how long you'll follow this patient? I'm getting your point that you want to further validate his blood pressure. So, what is a rough plan in your mind for how long you will follow this patient? My, 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 maybe, maybe three days, or I have to get a history of family. Okay, uh, there, uh, you'll take family history and follow for how long? So uh, what I want a comprehensive plan because this is a person who's coming to you and he want an answer towards his issue that is he hypertensive or not? So whether he need treatment or not? So what will you what a, what a plan you'll be giving to him that this is the plan and you'll come after one week to me or after two weeks to me? Yeah, I will follow up my Yeah, yeah and sir, uh, uh, in table, 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 Okay. So when so, I I will I will check I will take scenario uh, and I collected money angles and I will see it. Then I maybe I maybe I will come continue in one one week. Okay. 
So you'll continue to take readings and ask him to bring the readings after one week and then you'll decide about his blood pressure's yes. level, whether you, he needs treatment or not. Sometimes, Am I right some, in understanding? Sometimes it's my, my, we have uh, some patients to have a normal blood pressure okay. of this level. Okay. okay. So let's, sir, uh, yeah. sir, let us give to another, there are two, three more students need to give short questions. Okay. okay, I'm ready, I'm ready to. Okay, uh, Dr. Asli. Uh, thank you, can you hear me, Tita? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, I agree with uh, the one who talked before me that okay. I will follow up one one week, but according to the age, I will not worry too much because the age and uh, it's not very very serious. But uh, I, I I will try first to differentiate if it's white coat hypertension. Good. I will give so time. You will be you will be agreeing with the previous one that you will. Validate it further for one or two weeks. Okay. Anyone else add? Want to add I, something? And uh, okay. And iPhone, yeah, what that? iPhone guy, can you go and answer? Okay. Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, doctor? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We are here. Oh, this patient is a uh, fast and I will follow on three days only. Uh, three okay. days consecutive. Okay. Now let's see. You are all are right in a way, but your uh, your approach is not comprehensive. So okay. you're all you all were right in answering that this patient needs validation. That just yes. one reading is not enough to diagnose him hypertensive. Yes. But actually, you haven't really focused on my first three slides. I took those three slides that never take your hypertensive sure. patient at just hypertension. You have to assess him for all comorbidities. So let's see the answer of this case. Here your objective. You can all hear my, uh, see my slides? Yes, sir. Objective okay. or assessment. Objective of assessment in this kind of case. You all are focusing on this first objective, which is confirming diagnosis. I agree that this patient needs first Sir, okay, sir, sorry. Uh, I can't find his name. That's a phone for هذا ما عدت كهرن عدت كهجي سك حريم يا أخي ها عدت كهجي سك حريم ما هو فريق هلا فاينين فيرست is he still connected yeah he is connected but his voice is not uh yeah it's muted now I'm unmuted okay okay sir sorry 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 I think someone has by mistake muted me so no issue no issue no issue so we can now continue that you all are focusing on this first objective of confirming diagnosis. Now, there are few more things which you have to judge in such kind of patient. Always, which are going side by side. Think of etiology as well. If you are confirming him to be having hypertension, is this uh, essential hypertension or maybe secondary? Although, although these readings are looking to be an essential because 50 years male, mildly increased blood pressure, but it can be secondary in five to three, three to 5% of patients. So think of etiology. Third, always judge or assess this patients for any complication because you don't know he's having this blood pressure for how long and may have affected any organ system. That this patient is coming to you this time for just a mild headache, but he may be having associated exertional chest discomfort maybe shortness of breath, may have had a history of CVA about three months back. Nobody knows. So you have to judge for these things as well. And lastly, 
you have to assess for other comorbids, which is that you are asking him to go back and follow with blood pressure reading, okay? But he needs lipid profile, he needs fasting blood sugar, he needs other assessment to look for other major risk factors as well. So that means whenever you see a patient with high blood pressure, you have to judge him according to these four objectives. Confirm diagnosis, looking for etiology, looking for complications and looking for other comorbids. Now how to go about regarding diagnosis? Now again, I would like to ask, anyone can tell me what is the range for considering someone hypertensive according to ACCHA guidelines, which is there in 2017. What is the limit at which you can label someone hypertensive? I have a question for you, so I have a question for you. I have a question for you, and I have a question for you. I have a question for you, and I have a question for you. The definition of you is for you, and I have a question for you. Who can answer this question? Raise your hand. Yes, I don't know how to raise the hand. Can I answer? Okay. So you don't it's okay, you can just start asking. Go ahead, Dr. Abdinasir. Okay, thank you. And welcome, the, and the, the professor and the coordinator. And the last, the last cut point of the hypertension was 130, 90. The systole, if the systole is more than 130 and the diastole is more than 90, we say this is high blood pressure and it's a mission more than three or four different times. Okay, you are very right for systolic blood pressure is 130, but for the diastolic it's 80. This is okay, the 2017 sir. ACCHA guideline. Here is the classification. So you can see here the classification showing uh -huh. the normal is less than 120, less than 80. Then it's not normal, it's elevated. It's not hypertension as well. It is a class which is called elevated blood pressure. When your systolic is between 120 to 129 and diastolic is still less than 80. So that means a normal blood pressure is less than 120 systolic and less than 80 diastolic. And then the class elevated in stage one hypertension is 130 to 139 systolic and 80 to 89 diastolic. And the reference is ACC AHA guideline 2017, which is the latest of American guideline. European society has slightly different classification, but this is simple to, to remember. And stage two is greater than or equal to 140 and greater than or equal to 90. But what I consider that even this is stage one hypertension may not need treatment if your patient is low risk. That we'll discuss when your patient needs treatment. But firstly, why is it important to remember this classification? Because whatever after follow-up you'll give, you have to make out a certain base pressure of your patient, which may be average of multiple readings which you got from the follow-up. Then with that follow-up readings, you have to make an average. And with this average, you have to place your patient whether he's normal, whether he's elevated, whether he's stage one, whether he's stage two. And you will say that along with staging this patient with these blood pressure numbers, you have to assess his comorbidities to decide whether you can start drugs or not. That you'll see in later in, in the presentation. Now regarding blood pressure measurement, again, it's very important. I'm not going into the details, but this slide shows you the importance of properly measuring blood pressure. And in this one thing I will add is properly document accurate blood pressure reading. Now, most of the time you'll see that people take blood pressure and write a blood pressure which they round off by themselves. You have never seen a blood pressure which is not a multiple of 10. Usually the blood pressure is written as 130, 80, 140, 90. Blood pressure can be 132 by 84. Blood pressure can be 122 by 
86. So that means you have to document the blood pressure accurately. You can't round off a blood pressure. That is very important. I'm skipping this slide because we have to cover whole of the subject, but proper measurement of blood pressure is very important. And you can go to New England Journal of Medicine site. You can find a proper methodology of checking blood pressure. There is a video for that, about eight to 10 minute video, giving you a right idea how to measure blood pressure properly. Then even blood pressure you are monitoring exactly, accurately, but you found clinic blood pressure is something different. Home monitoring is different. And even 24 hour monitoring is different, maybe different on different days. So sometimes it's very difficult to decide your patient's base pressure. So you have to work a lot on that to get a right blood pressure without influences of secondary things on it. That's very important. And that, that's why they have made different limits for different situations. That you see the clinic blood pressure, if your clinic blood pressure is 120, 80 is equal to 165 of your nighttime blood pressure and 115, 75 of your ambulatory blood pressure. But this is making things complex. So just I am skipping, just giving you an idea that what times blood pressure relates to what level of blood pressure in terms of different situations. Nighttime blood pressure, normal limits are different. Daytime limits are different. Overall, 24-hour average is different because the night blood pressures are usually low as compared to the day blood pressures. So a normal blood pressure of daytime is less than 120, 80, but the night time is 100 by 65. This is just giving you an idea. Don't you don't have to remember each and every of this limit. So this, this way we have covered the etiology part. That means you have to remember the different classification and then with your patients reading and making it an average reading and then placing your patient where your patient is according to the blood pressure reading you have achieved to make an etiology you have to assess his is a history examination regarding essential secondary but there are some clues towards secondary hypertension which are there in this slide drug resistance abrupt hypertension onset of hypertension less than 30 year exacerbation of previously controlled blood pressure, disproportionate target organ damage for degree of hypertension, accelerated hypertension, diastolic hypertension in older age greater than 65, unprovoked or excessive hypokalemia. So these are the clues you have to pick in your patient to guide you towards any specific secondary cause of hypertension. Then complication, we know that hypertension can affect heart, brain, kidney, peripheral vasculature, eyes, and all these organs can be affected by hypertension by means of either acute involvement or maybe chronic progressive involvement. And there are different ways in which these patients can present, starting from MI, from stroke, heart failure, uh, brain hemorrhages, peripheral vasculature if you take gangrenes and sudden you know, peripheral vascular involvement. So these all you have to look for in your patient, both acute or chronic. Then other comorbids, and it has been seen that a hypertensive patient, 95% of the time have one of these with him, either age, dyslipidemia, diabetes, smoking, family history. So you have to judge all of this, these things. Because that particular person which I presented in front of you right from the, at the beginning, 50 years male with high, high blood pressure. You have to judge whether he's hypertensive or dyslipidemic as well. Because your objective of treating hypertension is not just to bring number down. Your objective is to bring cardiovascular morbidity and mortality down. And for that, you have to assess him very comprehensively for every risk factor and then take care of every risk factor as well. Then one thing more I add on along with these four objectives and in comorbidities, which are compelling and contraindications. Compelling indication means founding any specific thing in your patient along with high blood pressure, which compel you to choose certain drug. 
for instance, if your patient is having tachyarrhythmias with high blood pressure, like atrial fibrillation or history of SVT or anything of that kind, then even the beta blocker, which is not a first choice, will be first choice here. If he's having angina with high blood pressure, beta blocker will be the first choice. If diabetic, ACE, ARB will be your first choice. So that's the way to pick a drug according to compelling indication. And similarly, looking for comp contraindications as well. Because if you're thinking of giving some drug and you found that your patient have some contraindication, you can avoid that drug. So recapping those four objectives, confirmmed diagnosis, etiology, complications, and other comorbids. So the previous case which I discussed, you have to judge him comprehensively for these four things and how to go about your previous conventional tools, which are history and examination, previous blood pressure records, complaints related to complication, etiology, identifiable causes, causal factor, other major risk factor. So comprehensive screening in the history to achieve those four objectives. Similarly, examining your patient with those objectives. So that means you need to know complete details of all the etiologies of hypertension. What are their features in history and examination? Similarly, you need to know all the complications of hypertension and their features in history and examinations. Then after history examination, you have to do a preliminary set of tests, which are screening tests, again, helping you to guide you towards those four objectives. Like for instance, your patient is asymptomatic with slightly high blood pressure and did his creatinine and urine DR and found protein urea and RPCs and erased creatinine without symptoms. You may got that this patient may be having a kidney problem as a complication or etiology. So this kind of a set of tests you have to do and then specific investigations if needed according to your history and examination for any specific cause. So this all you have to do as well in your patient with who is coming with high blood pressure to you. Now we'll come after assessing this whole you have to decide whether you need to treat your patient or not. I'm skipping these two sides. You can later on see them. They will be... Uh, 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 Abed, you're recording this? Abdurashid, you're recording yeah, this? Yes, sir. He's recording, yeah. Yes. Okay. If it's recorded, then you can reshare this video to, to me as well, and they can oh. use it for further as well. Okay, sir. Sure. So these are... This slide is just showing the four different categories of patient which I, you, I, I told you normal, elevated, stage one and stage two, and what to do with them in terms of treatment strategies. Let's see a normal patient. You have to just promote lifestyle changes. In stage one, you have to judge his clinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular risk status. This is something new in the patient that you have to judge atherosclerotic cardiovascular score or estimate his cardiovascular risk, which I'm going to tell you how to do that. This is a new thing. And if it's greater than 10%, even your patient will be treated with 130 systolic blood pressure, pharmacologic blood pressure lowering medication, but he's not high risk, then you have to offer just non-pharmacological therapy. That means conservative measures. This is the way to calculate this risk. Risk calculator, you have to put these variable into this risk calculator and it will answer you the risk of your patient. The variable you have to judge in your patient is sex, age, race, total cholesterol, HDL, systolic blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, all that. And with different comorbidities, the target here you can see that what are the targets for different comorbidities. And if I just conclude them that in an uncomplicated hypertensive, your target is less than 140-90. But in a complicated hypertensive, your targets are less than 130-80. So if he is remaining beyond this limit with your conservative measure, then you have to offer pharmacological treatment. But if you can achieve this target less than 130-80 with your conservative measures, you can offer conservative measures.
And usually for low risk patient, we initially for first six to 12 week offer conservative measures to judge whether he's, because if you see, when we consider treatment, these conservative measures are so powerful that almost they can, they are equal to one or one and a half drugs. So here you can see that conservative measures have a very good role in managing hypertension, not only as, as a person who may be, may, be, may be able to avoid drugs or maybe reduce his drugs. If he is really following these conservative me measures, which are weight reduction, dash diet, sodium reduction, physical activity, moderation of alcohol and all these. Now regarding drug treatment or choice of treatments, any drug if you're using, and if it's bringing the blood pressure down can help you in achieving benefits. But there are some guidelines which are suggesting different drugs. If you look onto the NICE guidelines, it's offering if your patient is young, you can offer ACRB. He's, if he's above 55, you can offer calcium channel blocker as a second choice, A plus C, then A plus C plus D, and then beta blocker and so on. But this, this, this plan or this scenario is for a patient who's having no comorbidities, no compelling indication. Here you are seeing some drugs which are according to comorbidities, like heart failure patients, your choices may be beta blocker, ACRB, thiazide. Post MI patient, beta blocker, A, aldosterone antagonist, high CAD risk, thiazide, beta blocker, ACRB, diabetes, beta blocker, ACRB, CCB, thiazide, chronic kidney disease, ACRB, frequent stroke, thiazide, NASE. But if you see, in most of the comorbidities, you will found ACRBs are there as a compelling drugs. Now, if you look onto the latest guidelines, they are suggesting for initiation of antihypertensive drug therapy, first line agents include thiazide, CCB, A, or ARB. So out of four, if your patient is having no comorbidities, you can offer any one of them. There is one more point that if your blood pressure patients baseline pressures are above 20 systolic and above 10 diastolic, the target, whichever you have made for your patient. If they are above 20 systolic and above 10 diastolic, you can start right from the beginning with two drugs. And these two drugs can be, can be given separately or can be given in combination. Now, I have almost covered how to approach such kind of patients. Now, is there any difference in your thinking about this patient, which you previously just offering a follow-up for blood pressure measurements? What you are going to do now? Comprehensive history, examination, preliminary investigations as well. So is it, it is this whole exercise have made some different in your thinking towards this scenario? Anyone? Uh, has, uh... Anyone can answer? Raise your hand. Kofma Kedjawabi Karas, Ashen, or Ah, we had that a reason is saying, Ye patient in scenario called Huriala or patient on Kontajirka. On a history of the like in the case we have. Okay, we have to have a Dr. Ashley Pillan. Dr. Ashley, welcome. Yes, uh, there's a lot of chance in my mind. Now, uh, I can answer briefly that this patient needs full history and examination. I'm thinking the etiology that's behind the things that c can cause uh, high, high blood pressure. And etiology and, and, and complications the, and, and complications other as well. And other yeah. comorbids. Yeah. And for that, you have to take a comprehensive history, examination, and investigation as well. Yeah. So I think my job is done. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> but let's come to, let's see, we have assessed this patient comprehensively with these headings that uh, confirming diagnosis, etiology, complication, other comorbids, and I am giving you the answer. 
that we have gone through these four objectives comprehensively. That is the result. Now I want to answer for again from your side. Assessment revealed occasional increased blood pressure recording up to 150, 100 for last two years without significant symptoms and normal examination. FBS 110, cholesterol 202, LDL 135 with normal rest of the investigations. Anyone can answer that what should be the plan for this patient. And plan means treatment of conservative measure. And if treatment, which drug and what will be your targets for this patient? Uh, an assessment revealed occasional increased blood pressure recording up to 150 over 100 for the last two years without significant symptoms and normal examination. FPS of our first blood sugar of 110 mg per deciliter, cholesterol 202, and LDL 135 mg per deciliter with, uh, out with normal rest of investigation. Mahat Samani Savalu, so Ashan had the Sifi and Wahi. So, Abdul Rashid, is anyone trying or we can continue further? Sir, they are reading, I think, the slides. So let us give them a second and then if they raise hand, we will go. If they don't, then we will go forward. Okay. So should I wait or continue? Sir, a little bit. Let us wait for them and okay. check their okay. knowledge. Yeah. It's good there, Suashan. Suashan, Akhriya, and Kofkan or Bolly, Ligus or Bolly Compton, over 100. So it's totally about Bolly Compton, they're still in our pocket. Labasta is on the sort of significant septum majoro. The annual halamodo come over majoro. Examination is no normal. B is a socorto, a bolly toman, distracted cholesterol, is a low bolly lobo, LDL or bolso donation, a distracted without normal rest of investigation. We he color by the tank and lower add him has a male head. Swift answer actual theory. I do a cock ray, haga would not have big as what they got by the tank at us. What will be your mine so i should that could you have a good picker and i'm so off a gun tag and a school day quality is a level of action but i shall know you i'll go down that i think i should answer sir uh i think yes sir okay go ahead sir actually if you look onto this patient here you can see that this is looking a hypertensive patient because these readings are there for last two years but looking at, there are no other comorbidities, no issues. So it's, he's looking like an uncomplicated hypertensive. So your target here is less than 140, 90, which you have to achieve. So there are both options available. If this patient is agree for a strict conservative measure, I will stif, still give him a chance of one month of exercise, salt restriction, increase fruit and vegetable intake, and then see if he's achieving this. If not, then I'll start treatment. And since he's 50 years, then ACE and ARB would be a right choice. So the both options are true. Can wait four weeks to six weeks further for conservative measure or can start drug treatment with ACE or ARB. Now just I'm making this assessment slightly different. And you see that different assessment result can make different management strategy. Now the same patient, 50 years male with high blood pressure, you have assessed him further. That assessment revealed level of 140 to 160 systolic blood pressure, 90 to 120 level of blood pressure in next two weeks without significant symptom and normal examination. But if F FBS of 170 means he turned out to be a newly diagnosed diabetic. And his creatinine 2.3 and kidney involvement as well, CKD. So now you see that your assessment has made so much change in the management plan. Now he's certainly hypertensive with comorbidities, CKD and diabetic. So your target is less than 130-80. And that means you have to follow this algorithm that treating a patient with CKD Blood pressure goal less than 130-80 according to ACCHA guidelines. 
if he's having albuminuria, ACE inhibitor would be choice as a compelling indication. But since this patient's blood pressures are very high, you may need two or three drugs to bring to the target. So that's the way to approach. And let's take the third scenario with same patient. Assessment revealed occasional increased blood pressure recording for last two years. Exertional chest discomfort and SOB with FBS of 90, cholesterol 202, LDL 135 with normal, rest of the investigation. Now, what's the difference in this patient? And the difference is made by this exertional chest discomfort. Uh, so, Ashen, do you have a job to help? Can we hear coffee? Can we hear coffee? Can we hear coffee? Assessment revealed occasional increase in blood pressure recording for the last two years. Exertional chest discomfort, I mentioned, and SOB, or shortness of breath, and FBS of 90 mg per deciliter. Cholesterol is 202 and LDL is 135 mg per deciliter with normal rest of investigation. T Horoway, like how can correlate difference with the hair? Go ahead, Dr. Ahmed Muska. Can you go ahead and answer? Uh, uh, sorry, uh, rather than the uh, representation. Uh, can you repeat? And your voice does not look clear. Uh, sorry, this patient has uh, complicated uh, blood pressure. This maybe shortness of breathing, uh, complication of heart, maybe. Heart complication. Yeah, yeah. What kind of complication is it? What these symptoms are suggesting to you that this is patient? Maybe, maybe uh, pulmonary complication. Pulmonary complication. No, it's 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 angina because he's having exertional chest pain. Well, okay, I will sir. suggest all of you to go to my YouTube channel. You will find a lot of academic stuff of simple things. Hypertension, ECG, engine, a lot of things there in English. Although most of the videos are in Urdu, but there are videos in English as well, which give you the basic knowledge of these all things and especially hypertension, ECG and other. Here your hypertensive patient is having angina as well. So here your choice would be blood pressure targets less than 130, 80 beta blocker, ACE inhibitor to take care of blood pressure as well as angina. So with that, we are almost coming to the end. And if you have any questions, one or two, although you haven't really interacted the way I wanted you to be, because that make the things very lively. But uh, uh, I, I'm still happy with that, because few of them do interact it, and that really bring me, especially the lady which who really assess this thing that after this whole presentation, he's, he's making his mind or thinking differently. And this is the old reward, which really make, makes me happy. So if you give answer, uh, that really brings a new spirit of really continuing further. So but I never hesitate to answer. Nobody is, you can say, a master of everything. Everyone do mistakes. So never, ever hesitate to answer. And hope we'll do it in future as well. I'm very busy. So that's why I, I wish to do it weekly, but it's very busy. So we'll do these things once in a two, three months as well. And I'll uh, keep on interacting with uh, Abdul Rashid in inbox. So if any one or two question I can take. So I have uh, two, three minutes more. Yes, Abdul Rashid. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. We have a question in our session that uh, Dr. Dago uh, Muhammad will now start questioning. Hi, Dago, welcome. Good evening, sir. Uh, it's a pleasure to listen to you. Thank you for your time in this Ramadan. May Allah bless you. I would like to ask you uh, in a question as Somalis now is struggling in the world also COVID-19. Can you touch a little bit the relation of the, this kind of scenario you just show us with comorbidity uh, patient on that yeah. uh, it, scenario it, plus the COVID. So if you could just elaborate a little bit Will be in, re in, in relation to COVID-19, now it's very clear that 
every person who's having any of the comorbidity with him and if he is going to really uh, get effect, infected with covid-19 his mortality will be different and more as compared to a person who's having no mortality second in pakistan a lot of people are people are really uh, you can say afraid of taking drugs that thinking of that they, it may reduce their immunity and they they well, i constantly got phone phone calls from my patients that should we continue our anti hypertensive drug especially the as and arbs there are a lot of query about as and arbs because there is a theory that the receptor with which this covid 19 enter into the cell is the one which is ace 2 and it increases with the use of ace inhibitors or arbs so at present one thing which is very important that these patients who are hypertensive or having other comorbid should take extra care meaning by social distancing and other things and all those who are related to these patients should take extra care for them so it's a two step extra cares one for that those patients and one who are related to these patients should take extra care that shouldn't be bringing this covid 19 to them although they are taking extra cares second there is no problem with using acrbs in covid 19 patients whether they are at risk or infected even some studies have shown some benefit of covid acrb in these covid 19 so that's all because i i, uh, I it's not much related in a way to hypertensive these two things are important which i narrated but it what the also a second thing i want to ask you sorry oh, i just yeah. come to that uh, is the what related to us in somalia and we seen every day i'm obgyn so which is a clumsia which is related to the hypertension and the treatment we going through it's very complex the patient comes last minute to you you don't have history the pre eclampsia during eclampsia actually with seizures there are so the only thing is magnesium sulfate the way we treat it so any advice you can any updates on that area will be beneficial actually actually these eclampsia usually is a part of pregnancy induced hypertension so these patients should be properly followed right from the pregnancy especially if you have a pregnancy induced hypertension it starts after 20th week of gestation so you have to go for all preliminary tests looking for protein urea and other thing and judge whenever your patient is developing those things or not just treat them so once pre eclampsia or even if eclampsia is there it's not you can you can't treat blood pressure you have to take care of those things and that is again magnesium sulfate and if it's completion of gestation that uh, you have to uh, do the delivery either that cs or a, that's it Yes. Okay. So I think uh, I'm, I'm slightly running short of time. If if you sir, can excuse. Sir, sir, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. We have only I think one or two more only questions, and then at the end, the, some of the uh, student have requested to display your YouTube channel that they will uh, go through, and then they will later on follow. So the we will give one or two questions, sir. And I know that you are running short of time, and we will give now to the two more student who need to ask one or two questions, and then we will finish the. Oh. Uh, Galaxy GS6, he will ask you a question. So Galaxy 6G6, welcome and make it a question very brief and short. Hello, I want to ask a question, sir. Yeah. And my question is, I'm, I'm one of the doctors of isolation in Kenya, and I met with a suspect case of COVID-19 with hypertension. So he was... blood pressure of 170 and mm-hmm. 90 so what so what do you recommend for the drug of that we can give this case for management as management of so the same approach will be applied to even this patient you have to judge all those four things which i have right now described you have to judge his targets according to the comorbidities if he's having no other comorbidities nothing else then you certainly these these blood pressures are high and you need two or three drugs and nowadays you have this combinations of uh, acrb calcium channel blocker and even thiazide with it so you can use those drugs if it's like complicated kind of situation with pulmonary edema or angina or anything else you can iv medicate use iv medications as well 
So it's all depend. It's not just blood pressure number is important. It's all depend on that comprehensive assessment that will guide you. And you have seen the in our uh, presentation that same clinical scenario, but assessment made three different strategies for three different types of. But certainly, this patient will need two or three drugs. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will take the last question, sir. Uh, this is the last question we will okay. uh, take now. Abdul Rahman Hussein, now go ahead and ask your question and quickly. Thank you, Dr. Faro, and all other uh, audience. And I want to ask you as a patient risk to the COVID-19 and hypertension, hypertensive patient. Some of the hypertensive patients too with COVID-19, and they progress, they, they go into worsen their condition. Some of them, they develop what you call ARDS, and, and that will lead to dysemia and other. And some of, some of the signs, and it is uh, low blood pressure. And that low blood pressure, they, they begin to when they become recovery, they bec the blood pressure will be go to the uh, uh, normal level. So, but some of the patients of COVID-19, they have diarrhea, and that diarrhea will uh, change their blood pressure level. Instantaneously, they go up, sometimes they go down, and this frequently changes the blood pressure. So, can we give the the drug of hypertensive, even though they yeah. change the, their blood pressure. As, and this again, this answer is there in my first three slides that I all, already discussed the pathophysiology, the, a lot of influences on blood pressure. So you have to judge according to situations. Sometimes it so happens. Similarly, our hypertensive patients, when they develop MI, they may go into shock as well because of that MI. And in that situation, you have to stop all antihypertensives. Certainly, if it's fluctuating, then you have to judge what are the influences on this fluctuation. Is this transient peak of high blood pressure and then low? Then you have to judge and decide according to that particular situation. So it's all according to the situation. If your pressure is low, you have to stop medication by any way. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Welcome in, Abdul Rashid. I'm displaying on the screen. The channel yes, is simple, simple. Just Dr. Fawad Farooq. You will write. You will find the channel. Dr. Fawad Farooq. And my okay. Facebook page is similarly with Dr. Fawad Farooq. Uh, I think they, we are recording and they can also take screenshot yeah. with your Turk set. Okay. And, Sarah, this, this was the last session of we have right now. And I think I, we greatly appreciate it for your time and your teaching and your dedication. And I think every doctor here in the group, we are almost the 100 and some doctors on the live now. And they get your recap. I hope this live also, they will read, listen again, and they will get the point. So thank you very much for your timing. And thank and you. Thank you, all the audience. And thank you, Abdul Rashid, as well. I'm going offline. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, Dr. Abdul Rashid and everyone, okay. do you want to continue the discussion with Dr. Abdul Rashid or you want to, guys, no. Ms. Kattin, Dr. Abdul Rashid and Nossi with of Somali? I want to ask you when you have the question, Dr. Abdul Rashid, I want to ask you when you have the question, Dr. Abdul Rashid, and I want to ask you when you have the question, at least we have the question. Is and Elias, 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 in communication, the advantage of sober than I see a stroke, you have a sober than Merca at Vice Cabucana, a Lalo, or rather, chronic disease. Gah, why are all for the Capu for the long Lola Talinkaro? See, Yanni, Logosha, Halibata, or Lia Druka. 
hypertension qofkan ee dhikarkiis waa 180 dhaa systolic diastolic no 90 ama 80 ama 100 horay daawo kama siin karno hadda waxa uu wajiga jirta marka sidaarkii saddexaad uu professor ka hadlay hadda xasuustaan qofka marka history is at fiirisid assessment door habu galaya cudur kale oo dhikar aan heen miyuu qaba ee maxa markaan assess gareeyno ama aan baarno sida dhig biso kale cbc urea creatinine lft oo dhan kan ka qaadno waxaan noo soo baxay marka waa inaan marka hore isku dedegan daawooyinka ay siin ay peter peter blocker calcium iyo diuretic daawooyinka la siiyo patient ka ay hadda ay sheegay waa in lagu dedego maaha marka cudurkan covid 19 qof dhi ka ku dhacay daawintaana in ay covid 19 ku geliyo oo jeeda kale oo kale iyo daawinta dhi ka kana maaha covid 19 was secondary maaha primary لكن برايمري وقت هو هادي كار هذا بدي كارو وفكم دي كار كيس موت هو هاد سبتماتيك مس إيه سبتماتيك سبتماتيك وعلى ده ها مركو بيشن كو على ماذا كم موران مركو إيه سبتماتيك ويا هاي نا اثنين سبيشن كان سبتماتيك وامك على ماذا كم موت إيه سبتماتيك نو مركو بيشن كو سعلا ماذا كم موت هذا بدي كو هاد سبتماتيك مرك عم تيرنو هذا بدي وحاجة تهايبرتنشن استيجي أجرا استيجون استيجو يو برايمري استيجون استيجو هذا وقت داوين تيري أمريكا فيرين هذا دوسن قط كان عذر كله أو كور مبيلتي أما عذر كله أو أوسن عذر كله أو أوسن قابين وهذا جبت لايفستال تريتمنت لايفستال هذا أستلاه ده كده داوينه أي أجرا مركا بيسيك كونسبت إنه أجرا بيشن كوجو هاري وحنا هنا أو بيشن كوجو ديكرو قبعة هدي مركا أو قط كان عذر كله أو قبعة سيدا هارد فيلير استروك يسيبي أو قبعة ده نوعين عسى أجريسيف نسدد حداو أو كله أفرد داو سو قدرنا قط لك هدي كوفيد نينتين كل دعوة دي كرك يسنا مرنا هوسو دعوة مرنا كل دعوة سيدا هو شفتنا مرنا هو كور إيمانه يا مرنا هوسو دعوة وحن فيرينا وحكوس قري ما لايف ستايل كا ما سيدا إنه أسبوع ده نعبى ما إنه استرس قبعة تنشن كيس ما بدينه هاي إيش كيس هو سيدا وحلا بدنا فيرينا هنا هذنا إيج كيس أو ميمسن ميل إيه فيميل هذنا سكس ديلا ده ميل إيه فيميل أيضا وافيرينا مركو هارب هنا أو قادر سيدا بروفيسور كهاد ستيج سلايس كي وقولنا بيمار كي كهوري وسؤال كي ديكو ويدينا أي سدح سيناريو بناص وبندقي سدح سيناريو ميت ولا ميت كلو كوة تي ميت ولا ميت كلو كدوانا وحاوطن بيكي إكسرشنال أو آه جست إكسرشنال مطلب شورتنس أوف بريت كا وحكيني وحكلم معها بيكوس there is a low quantity and a low concentration of oxygen and that mostly is maybe it's angina or maybe it is ischemic heart disease ischemic heart disease ko a part of the angina marku hal ga raba ina uga no su'aasha da dan jawab tii buu laabto we have to evaluate why not fear now he allah how comorbidity ga beesh ku qore sa study garayna age kiis waa maxay wa ko male and female korma three reading four reading three times then we have to wait one or two weeks according to dr fahad fawad marka jawaab tiina ku soo jeclahay daawada ay lagu degdegin la ga see first assessment and sameeyno then first reading second reading and then we have to wait the one or two week and then observe haddu qofka ay subtimaatu jay haddii subtimaatu wiyo cudur kala qaba we have to start the treatment whether we give one single treatment we give two treatment or three treatment according to his clinic haddu old yahay and he has some kind of like retinal disease like retinin is high his sodium potassium is low his acid base is creatinine and he is also another you know uh, diabetic we have to think about which drug we have to give which is safe that were safe or mihima that were ever and safe hain because every dawa safe ma so that is in a bit we cannot give every drug peter blocker we cannot give every patient but when there in now which patient i am seeing karna dawa and which patient i am seeing karna dawa and patient ke ba sadda hal isku tari karna is in a bit peter blocker or calcium because big we at ودرك كلا نقول لك بعض. مركو هنجي على سؤال قارقود كو إيش تذكر كلا دكاتير تا إن أي سؤال كلا يودين دور. مركو هنكو سو جب جبين يا أساس من تيجو دكتور فهد هذا وناش هاي عن دب وفيرنا سيناريوم كيس ده هي سيناريوم بيشن كأيش كيس ده أديسة هيلجا عذر كو كل عايز سكرت إنديجر إنتو أها إيو إن لايف ستايل كو بلاونو. إن ده وده مركي بوره أنا كو بلاونو. كوفيد 19 هو سبريت. هاي ال كوفيد 19 هو أوتر ميون ديزيز. يعني it affects it fights with the immune disease patient can what they so according to assessment you cannot say he is covid 19 and he's hypertension hypertension that was hello could you know covid 19 has its own way and hypertension but what school money how why 
و كورمبيلتي كان كهلينه. They will join together and they will make it a little bit more worse. قبل اللي قلنا هي أكسجين بالو حري نيبلايز هالو حرو فنتليت هالو حرو. معناه ده حواي. He was having high blood pressure. His venous return blood was coming back, and he was not able to maintain. EBC came and his peripheral was not good. So what happened? His heart demand more oxygen, more pump. So what happened? The patient gets shortness of breath. Like on the same time, there is infection. Or oh, have a COVID-19. So patient who has COVID-19 is so difficult. So that's why we are fighting with COVID-19 along with ventilator. Next question. Uh, I hope I answered your question and then let me see. If there's no question, then we can close the session or Dr. Noor Idris. Go ahead, Noor Idris. Uh, Dr. Noor. Uh, okay, sorry. Sorry, good guy, sir. And Dr. Abishit, Oku Salamay, Daman Dagatir Tikalno Wa Salamay, and Ramadan Kareem. Dr. Oharwa, I know Kuhi Di, so I'll, sometimes Oharagna, Bukana Dagal, or high blood pressure, Leh, Oku Imana, as a emergency hypertension, or Mark, 180, 120, Oku Imana, and some, وحين يسيلي إنه كله كومربيدس كله ديابيتيك ماي how can we manage such like that that case well and أرتوما سنت دون دون وحواي ديكر كا حتى دو حواي رانك هاللي حتى داوين تريتمنت هاي بتريشن وها لوكال قبي إلى آخر ستيج حتى أنا قلت نين ستيب كوهري وحلا ده لايفستايل موديفيكيشن وها كوجرة دايت and exercise Limit alcohol and tobacco use. We have to reduce stress. We have to have a good step for a second lifestyle change. We have to have a good step for a second lifestyle change. So, lifestyle change. Then we use drug therapy. We have to step for a second lifestyle change. We have to have a good step for a second lifestyle change. Drug use different change. We have to have a good step for a second lifestyle change. We have to have a good step for a second lifestyle change. Dor dawa para para, mahal dah more modification, or sida indi gulu tu. Mereka dawa ini ke mereka wajib kuharan tay stage reading kau noh eh, mereka reading ke kau. Reading kau tu normal less than 120 millimeter per meter tu ya, he doesn't need any more treatment. Period. Dawa mau pahana. Hati systolic between 120-129, oh ya, he systolic less than 80, then you know still he does not need medication. Hati stage ke kau wat. Okay, so good boy, stage can lava you high. Or systolic you go through the failure 130 to 139. I'm out, there's still we have between 80 and 89. Then we have to start lifestyle modification with treatment. Like a stage can start the heart by only yourself. Can go out, can lava. Or at least 140, or there's still at least 90 millimeter of mercury. So as I said, if you have a plan, stage can lava, or has systolic you at least one other 140, or I'm a diastolic at least 90 millimeter. Because hypertension crisis can into Sangarin, we have the an or a systolic over 180. At the 180, you got that is hypertension crisis. You have to treat that patient very aggressive. Because the way in the top can see now she can do some lahin comorbidity. Other can also lahin. We can start still we can start with a lifestyle modification. At the like the current is so low, it's too much high. We can simply start beta blocker. At the also lahin kidney problem or. Diabetic kalau salah, like untuk diabetic dia, we should not start it as ini yang betul. As Dr. Kuat said already. Like yang haram na ini adalah kalau hal education ku already dah use way koran tu, 50 above, then treatment is the most option. The required life is, as I said, the histerium wa akhirnya tipu perso. Most of them they were having, some of them was young, no any symptom. Other one has symptom. The other one has more symptom. Mereka tahu ini kan sini ni orang nak terhad. Tapi mereka hakul heran tay, not only number. قف كاس بدر كيف وقوا هدول ديك سكر وقوا we have a treatment بحيلة diabetes وهذا الله is the mother of disease so mother of the disease هدي بدر كار or hypertension over here it won't go away that can it it will not treat that was a lifestyle comment that was we have to start treatment 
Reason why? Because diabetic is one of the mother disease. It reduces the patient's autoimmune lower, and the person of Kutuhelia Gikarkisu it will go high. Because why? Erythemia, the arterial vascular system arteriosis, they will become narrow. The blood systolic will become what? Rushing. What happened? The blood increases its own velocity. So there will be more mobility. So the karka, the diabetic, you have to treatment. That will have seen in number one. Kuhera and number two are start low dose with the first line drug treatment. Had the I will skip it. Tell me why. With different read, different occasion, then start with the second treatment. Had the second treatment, so the like beta blocker at the at grade six, then you have to start with the three. The most important thing is that diuretic. Because patient can is having diabetic, diabetic has a three mostly complication. Halda, neuropathy, retinopathy, and nephropathy. Retinopathy go Hawaii, what the Kanan, Kelly It is any stage of diabetic. What happened? Patient can will not produce anything of what? Angiotensin converting enzyme, which makes mostly made in kidney. Because Asher Parapadon, while I can't remember, so Gabi, you may not know what We start slowly dose. Diabetic patient with different two weeks observation. Had the who's a diabetic coming start with lifestyle modification until this exercise is a strike, is a weight gain piece of what you have in a couple of dawa couple having. Had you like a socorro cover dawa couple of. I think I hope I answered your question. I have seen you come at the minute. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, fam. And how are you to visit Omar Hello. 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 Because that talk is about so much, so all I that is a regulation. So that one I will, I will follow it up, and I will just thank you for the beautiful presentation. Though I came late, because I never meant to meet in Kalan line. Thank you very much. No problem. It's our pleasure. Thank you, everyone. I hope next session, inshallah, we see Adam. Thank you very much. Um, one question, though. One quick question. Yes. Okay. Can we have the slides from the doctor, please? Yeah, we will ask him. We will ask him to have it, and I think also he need. I think I know Hukar about this recording life of this. So, and if you yeah. have this, send me your recording, and I will send you shall it slide or with Jimmy, inshallah. Or we can, Perfect. Have it. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you, Doctor Dago. Ah. Oh, I'm attending the man khara la this year Ramadan al Karim hal bil idem arkin wa din ise. إلى آخر هذه السيدة دذالك أكون جوتين السيوة ذا ما لا ماشى جوتين نحلل دذالة every day وحلل برتا ما لي لا يكانوا إن شاء الله دكتور عبد الرشيد thank you so much for your explanation for your expertise your excellent presentation أما أنت نوب حسين هذه هذا ما سنت هذا الدكتور ما سنت الدكتور سلوا كرأد أذن وما سنت هاي إنبال دغاتير تنو ما سنتين جزاكم الله خير دمان تين سلام عليكم thank you رمضان كريم رمضان كريم thank you Thank you.